Hi. Our physical world is becoming smart. Everyday objects increasingly have sensors, processors, and communications capabilities, forming a so-called Internet of Things or network of smart objects. And increasingly, we find these smart objects on people, for example, and, and soon inside of people: uh, fitness uh, trackers, health uh, trackers, smart watches, smart uh, phones, smart glasses. You can even buy a connected toothbrush these days. Our cars, of course, are increasingly chatting with one another with smart traffic systems, uh, finding out about the weather um, and so on. And our homes, increasingly, are connected as well with smart alarm systems, smart thermostats, smart lights. Increasingly, our cities are becoming connected, monitoring traffic, parking, energy use, and more. But what bothers me about all of this is that this smart world is largely fragmented right now and very incomprehensible by, uh, to people. And the question that my students and I have been focused on recently is how can we make this world of smart objects more human? How can we make it accessible to all? And the solution that we've come up with, and which I'd like to uh, talk about today, is to map software functionality onto smart objects to extend uh, their physical capabilities. For example, here we have a radio with a tuning knob and a volume knob, and you can access additional functionality in this radio simply by holding your phone, tablet, or smart glasses over it. For example, here we're changing the behavior of the radio so that the different tuning knob settings play different playlists that we have. And once you've customized or changed your radio, you can, of course, just use the physical buttons. You don't need to use the phone or tablet anymore. But just like Tim Berners-Lee 25 years ago was motivated to make it easier to connect different documents existing on different computers, we want to make it really simple and straightforward to connect uh, different smart objects with one another. And so you can use this same overlaid interface to, for example, connect your smart radio to a smart speaker. If you no longer want that connection, you simply uh, cross the line there between the output of one and the input of the other. Notice that this whole approach is actually based on open web standards so that anyone can create uh, one of these smart objects and it can become part of the whole um, ecosystem. Here's another example. Uh, Valentin in the uh, video here wants to be able to control all the lights in the room with just one simple knob so he doesn't have to go around and uh, turn all of them on and off every time. So he simply uses this interface to draw connections between all of them and can then just use one knob to turn them all on and off. If you, um, you can connect the smart objects in your home to the smart grid and the smart city. Here we're finding out um, what the price of electricity is different times of the day, connecting that to the dryer so that the dryer will automatically run when the price of electricity is lowest. We think this approach has a lot of potential for education, learning, and play. Here's my nine-year-old son putting together a, motor, um, a, a robotic car with uh, two smart sensors, two smart motors. He can just take a picture of that car to create a custom remote control for the car he just built. And he can program his robotic car simply by drawing uh, on the screen, uh, connecting the sensors to elements like inverters, scalers, and so on, and to the motors. And he gets immediate feedback about uh, the program that he just um, gave his car and can see what the resulting behavior is like. You can, create, or you can create connections or links between the smart sensors on your body and uh, the smart environment around you. Here we're looking at real-time data of uh, Valentin's um, temperature, galvanic skin response, and heart rate. He can connect us to the color of the light, the smart light in the room, so that he gets feedback while he's meditating about how effective he is at uh, reducing his heart rate. We call this approach smarter 
objects, uh, because these smarter objects basically combine the best of both the digital world and the physical world. The infinite extensibility, adaptability of digital smart objects with the elegant, simple designs of uh, physical objects. And we hope that this approach basically will make this whole Internet of Things a lot more transparent and a lot more accessible to all. I want to end by thanking uh, Valentin Hearn, who's somewhere in the audience here, over there, uh, who's uh, one of the brilliant students I get to uh, work with every day um, at MIT, and who is the main person working on this project. Thank you. <laughs>